Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will review hypothesis testing. A statistical hypothesis is an assumption about some population parameter. This assumption may or may not be true. The best way to determine validity of a hypothesis is to examine the entire population. However, this is obviously impractical in most cases, so instead, we typically examine a random sample from that population. If the sample data is not consistent with the hypothesis, then the hypothesis is rejected. Now, there are two types of statistical hypotheses that we need to know. The first being the null hypothesis. and this is denoted H naught. And then there's also the alternative hypothesis, or H A. There are also two types of errors that can result from a hypothesis test. The first being a type one error. Now a type 1 error occurs when we reject a null hypothesis when it is true. The probability of committing a type 1 error is called the significance level or alpha and is often denoted with an alpha. So alpha is the probability of committing a, a type 1 error and that's known as the significance level. And we'll define all these terms a little bit more as we move on. The second type of error is the type 2 error. Now a type 2 error occurs when we fail to reject a null hypothesis that is false. The probability of committing a type 2 error is called beta and is often denoted with a beta. Now the most common statistical or the most common hypothesis testing that we will encounter is that of testing a mean. Now the process of hypothesis test testing consists of four steps. Number 1, state the hypotheses. 2, formulate an analysis plan. 3, analyze a sample data and 4, interpret the results. So let's run through each one of those steps. So hypothesis testing can be broken down into a four-step process. So step number one is the first step in a hypothesis test requires that we state a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis. So we need to define or state the hypotheses. And this is a in this step we define a null hypothesis and an an alternate hypothesis. Now the hypotheses are stated in such a way that they are mutually exclusive. That is if one is true, the other must be false. So here are three sets of uh, hypotheses that can be defined. Uh, in this first uh, step. One, there's three sets. So for the null hypothesis, we can say that a mean is equal to some number. In that case, the alternative hypothesis would be the mean is not equal to some number. The second set of uh, hypotheses that we can test is that a mean is greater than or equal to some number and then in this case the alternative hypothesis would be that that mean is less than that number and finally we can test that the mean is less than um, or equal to uh, some number um, and the alternative hypothesis would be the mean is greater than that number so each set makes a statement about how the population mean is related to a specified value m. The first set of hypotheses is known as a two-tailed test. 
So this is a two-tailed test. Uh, this is so because since an extreme value on either side of the sampling distribution would cause us to reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis has to be equal to that number. If it's greater than, it's rejected. If it's less than, it's re rejected. And because it could be on either side of that extreme, um, then it's a two-tailed test. The other two t sets of hypotheses are one-tailed test. And since an extreme value on only one side of the sampling distribution would cause us to reject a null hypothesis. So that's step number one. We need to define the hypotheses. Let's go on to step number two. Once we determine our null and alternative hypothesis, we can move to the next step of developing the analysis plan. So step two is our analysis plan. The analysis plan outlines how to use the sample data to accept or reject the null hypothesis. It will define the following elements. First, alpha or the significance level will be defined. So the significant level, uh, often we choose the significance level equal to 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or 0 0.10, but in reality, it can be any value between 0 and 1. Now the second thing uh, we need to define is the test method. And uh, we will use the one sample t-test to determine whether the hypothesized mean differs significantly significantly from the observed sample mean. So our testing method and most of the times you would use the one sample t-test though there are others out there. So that's step number two. We need to develop our analysis plan by defining a significant level, significance level as well as a test method. Now after steps one and two are done, we move on to step number three. And in step number three, we use the sample data to conduct a one sample t-test. And so this is where we analyze sample data. So step number three is analyze sample data. This process includes finding the standard error, degrees of freedom, test statistic, and the p-value associated with the test, test statistic. So let's run through how we define each one of those. So analyzing a sample data, data. First, we find the standard error. And we've defined this in previous tutorials, uh, specifically in the t-distribution tutorials. And the sam uh, sample error st simply is the standard sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. The next thing we need to find is the degrees of freedom, which we've defined also before, which is simply the number of samples minus one. Uh, finally, uh, the test is uh, the test statistic is a t-score defined by the following equation. t is equal to x bar minus the mean divided by the standard error. So this is our t-statistic or the t-score where you know x bar is the sample mean that's the that's from what we the sample uh, parameter that we pulled from the population this is the mean is the hypothesized population mean and SE is of course the standard error. We then uh, determine the p-value using the t-distribution tables. So we uh, finally determine the p-value using the t-distribution 
distribution tables. The p-value represents the probability of, of, obser obser of observing a sample statistic as extreme as the test statistic. So if the sample findings are unlikely given the null hypothesis, we will reject the null hypothesis. This involves comparing the p-value to the significance level that we defined in our analysis plan. Now, we will reject the null hypothesis when the p-value is less than our significance level. So when the p-value is less than alpha or our significance level, then the null hypothesis is rejected. So this is ultimately what we're working towards, this this information or this, uh, this conclusion. And that's essentially step number four where we, where we interpret the results. So let's run through an example. Let's, let's do a little hypothesis testing here. Let's say an engineer has developed a new energy efficient mower engine. He claims that the engine will run continuous, continuously for five hours or 300 minutes on a single gallon of regular gas. Suppose a simple random sample of 50 engines are tested. The engines run for an average of 295 minutes with a standard deviation of 20 minutes. So let's state the null hypothesis that the mean runtime is 300 minutes against the alternative hypothesis, hypothesis that the mean runtime is not 300 minutes. Let's use a significance level of 0 0.05. And let's write down all the information that we were given. So the engineer claims that the mower will run continuously for 5 hours or 300 minutes. So the population mean or that this is in case going to be our um, also our null hypothesis because that's what we're testing. So population mean and the null hypothesis is 300 minutes. Our, our uh, samples, we pulled 50 random engines out of a uh, population of engines. And in that, in that uh, number of tests, the average runtime was 295 minutes with a standard deviation of 20. Once again, our significance level is 0 0.05. So if we find a um, p-value that is less than 0 0.05, then we're, we are going to reject our null hypothesis that the mean run time is not 300 minutes. So let's, uh, let's just run through the four step process of hypothesis testing. The first step is the first step is to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So we've already done that. Um, the null hypothesis is that the mean is equal to 300 and the alternative is that the mean is not 300 minutes. These hypotheses constitute a two-tailed test. The null hypothesis will be rejected if the sample mean is too big or if it is too small. Now, our second step, step two, is to formulate our analysis plan. We will use the one sample t-test with a significance level of 0.5, which was given in our problem. So our analysis plan is simple. Uh, our significance level is equal to 0 0.05, and we will use a one-time uh, t-test, or one sample t-test. Now step number three, 
is uh, to analyze the sample data. Now using the sample data we compute the standard error, the degrees of freedom, and the t-score test statistic to finally get a p-value. So the standard error in this case is equal to uh, s over the square root of n which is equal to um, 20 divided by the square root of 50 which is equal to 2.83. Second, we find the degrees of freedom, which is equal to 50 minus 1, or 49. And then finally, we find the t-score, which is equal to x bar minus the population mean, or the stated population mean, or the null hypothesis, divided by SE, which is equal to 295 minus 300 divided by 2.83 and that's equal to 1.77. Now since we have a two-tailed test, the p-value is the probability that the t-score having 49 degrees of freedom is less than negative 1.77 or greater than 1.77. So next we need to do is go back and interpret our results or first find the p-value and then interpret our results. So heading back to the t-distribution tables we find that the prob probability falls somewhere between po the 0 0.05 and the 0 0.10 probability tells. So right off the bat since it runs higher than 0 0.05 and less than 0 0.10 uh, we can go ahead and visually see that it falls somewhere around 0 0.085 and that is going to be greater than 0 0.05 and because of that uh, since the p-value 0 0.05 is greater than the significance level of 0 0.05 we cannot reject the null hypothesis so that's all I got for you guys that's hypothesis testing I hope you guys uh, learned a little bit or uh, had a nice review. If you guys have any questions, hop on over to engineerandtrainingexam.com and shoot me an email, some feedback, uh, and I'll be glad to answer and help you guys and guide you in any way. All right? So for now, you guys take care. All right?